Okay, as we continue on talking about things that we're looking for in power amplifiers, the next thing we're going to talk about is linearity. The power amplifier must not distort the signal because distortion causes a lot of distinct problems. And I'm going to say that there should be a caveat here that distorting the signal means that we don't distort it too much. So the first problem that distortion of a signal causes is unwanted emissions. Unwanted emissions are things like harmonic distortion, which are primarily caused due to compression of the signal. And we can think of this if the signal is a sine wave going into the amplifier and it gets compressed. When it comes out of the amplifier, it's going to start to square up or uh, become more like a square wave or uh, some kind of distorted sine wave. And if we were to do a Taylor series expansion of that distorted sine wave, we would see that there would be a lot of harmonic content. The next challenge that we have is that if we distort the signal too much, we might have an inability to demodulate the signal at the receiver. And what we mean here is that amplitude and phase distortion of the signal can cause changes in the signal that are not reversible or they're beyond the ability of the receiver to recognize them. Another challenge caused by linearity in a power amplifier is that it can lead to more out-of-band noise. An increase in the out-of-band noise uh, due to distortion from the PA can increase the out-of-band noise floor, which can cause problems at the receiver and also can cause regulatory problems as any noise that's transmitted uh, out of the antenna could interfere with frequency bands that are not uh, those that were intended to radiate in, uh, which means that we could be uh, causing problems with other people's spectrum. Now I wanted to revisit the topic of modulation for just a, a moment because the primary challenge that we're going to have with linearity is in uh, being able to demodulate this, the transmitted signal at the receiver. Now when we talk about modulation, we can modulate either the amplitude and or the phase or frequency of a signal. And an example that uses both amplitude and phase modulation is something that we call quadrature amplitude modulation. Here I've drawn a 16 quam constellation and for a 16 quam constellation we can embed four bits of data uh, into a constellation where every four bits has a unique amplitude and phase combination. For instance we might encode four bits in this dot here or four bits in this dot here uh, and uh, each of those has if we look at it a different amplitude and a different phase as we rotate them, uh, rotate it from the uh, coordinates of our uh, system. So the question is what happens if we send this signal through the amplifier and the amplifier distorts the signal? Okay, so as we continue to look at distortion, we can look at uh, what we call amplitude distortion. And we already saw this with the compressive nature of a power amplifier. We remember that as we increase the power input uh, to an amplifier, the power output should increase linearly, but in reality, the output power compresses at some power level. And if we were to plot this in terms of the gain versus the input power, we would see that at high output power levels, the gain of a power amplifier drops and the difference between the ideal gain curve, which should be flat for all input power, is what we call AM to PM distortion, sorry, AM to AM distortion. So if we have our ideal gain curve and we see the gain curve of a real power amplifier, the AM to AM is caused by the delta between the ideal relationship and the measured gain of the system. So what we're saying is that the input amplitude creates a non-one-to-one -one change to the output and non-ideally modulates the signal. The same thing can happen with the output phase from the amplifier. So ideally, the output phase would be constant for all input powers, but in reality, the output phase varies as a function of input power. So as we said, ideally the angle of the output is constant for all input powers, but the reality is that there's a delta phase function uh, as a function of the input power.
So for this phase variation, we see that the input amplitude modulates the internal device capacitances, and hence we have different RC delays that cause amplitude variation as a function of the input power. So if we want to revisit the constellation that we just looked at and see how AM to AM and AM to PM distortion might affect the constellation, we'll do so now. AM to AM distortion says that the amplitude differs from the ideal points, which are drawn in the blue circles here, as a function of the amplitude. So for instance, if we're at low amplitudes, our desire our output signal might be pretty close to the center of the ideal circle. But as we increase the amplitudes to these higher constellation points, they might be distorted more. So we see a compression of the constellation. AM to PM distortion says that as the amplitude changes, the phase shifts more or less, depending upon uh, how, how the uh, internal device capacitances work. So the way I've drawn it, we have bigger phase shift at lower amplitude. So for instance, at high amplitude, our phase might be near the, it might cause modulation near the center of the circle. And as we lower the amplitude, we might get these big phase shifts away from the center of the circle. Now in reality, an amplifier has both AM to AM and AM to PM distortion. And so our constellation might have both non-ideal amplitude, amplitude compression and non-ideal phase rotation. Okay, so to summarize our AM to AM distortion we have compressing gain as the power is increased, the ideal dots, the, the, the uh, ideal blue circles, uh, our measured output red dots move further away from the desired point. And our AM to PM distortion, as the amplitude increases or decreases, we might see a different phase rotation at different amplitude levels. Now it's important to note we can also have PM to AM distortion. So rotations in our input phase can cause amplitude distortion and we can also have PM to PM distortion where rotations uh, in the input phase cause rotations in the output phase but these are rare uh, except for special cases uh, and they're assuming generally that the supply network has no dependence. Now I wanted to note that particularly with the amplitude distortion, we can create spurious or harmonic emissions. And what we mean by this is if we were to look at the power spectral density of an ideal signal uh, at the input, so this is our input signal, and we run this through a power amplifier and look at the output in a real power amplifier, we're not only going to have the original signal, but we're going to have created some harmonic content at two times the original signal's frequency, three times the original signal's frequency, really integer multiples of the input signal's frequency. Okay, so that will do it for our introduction to power amplifiers. And in, in the next lectures, we'll start to look at different types of power amplifiers. Uh, specifically, we'll look at linear amplifiers, switching amplifiers, and then some transmitters that we might use both linear amplifiers and switching amplifiers and